Welcome back, you've built the Exiles. So people sort of like going through skills and things like that in Path of Exile 2, and because we're not far away from it coming out, at least in early access, I thought I'd go through and have a look at some of the returning skills that are migrating from Path of Exile 1 to Path of Exile 2, and talk about some of the differences. And there are some significant differences. One of the things I also sort of looked at was where skills had one skill function in Path of Exile 1, what I can see is like things like Toxic Rain have been broken down into potentially multiple parts in Path of Exile 2, as just one example. And there's obviously a ton of new skills, but they're sort of dissecting skills and then emphasizing parts of skills moving forwards for the skills that are migrating over. But that's just one thing that I did notice in some of the observations. But anyway, let's talk about some of the skills that are making their way back into Path of Exile 2 from Path of Exile 1. Okay, so let's get straight into it. Now, the PoE1 skills are taken directly from the PoE wiki, and the PoE2 skills are taken from the fan-made PoE2 database website, which I'll put a link in the description to below. Okay, so first up, we've got Arc. Now, the big thing that I noticed with Arc when looking at this, if we take this for what it is, which is base level, so it starts at gem level 10, where you can get access to it natively, I would assume. And the other side of this is, and what this is also based on the uncut gem system that's coming into Path of Exile 2. Now, notice requires level 27 initially versus requires level 12. So what we can take from this is Arc is going to be hopefully significantly more powerful than what it was before. The other thing to also notice is it chains a lot less. So it's going to be more around supporting it with supporting skills most likely. So for example, you would proc arc and then that's going to then be a secondary follow-up skill or there would be a wide range AOE skill of some sort that then you would use arc to do a fair bit more single target damage to. The other big change here is critical strike chance is at a base much higher as well. The base damage, oddly enough, like this is level 20 assuming that at level 10 assuming level 20 gems, the base damage is relatively comparable for the low end damage if we look at the original which is 6 to 198 and then 14 to 81 if we duplicate that by a multiple of two there's a bigger amount of lower base damage and a much smaller higher endpoint damage point and that's probably because damage is going to be rescaled in path of exile 2 where it's sort of crept out with power creep in poe 1 so potentially arc is going to be a lot more of a powerful skill than what it was before and of the obvious thing here is it'll likely synergize with a number of other lightning skills. The other big thing here is it's giving us uh, procs for, for chance to shock and there's like shock, cast on shock and stuff like that in Path of Exile 2 versus what we've had in Path of Exile 1. So there's definitely a lot of other in implementations and or interactions that we can expect with Arc. But overall, the new Arc doesn't look too different from the previous Arc. It does indicate a slower gameplay style potentially. But that could also mean it could be a faster style if it's based on chaining skills together, which we know Path of Exile 2 is taking a bit of a design element in that direction. The next one is Totem. So this is the only Totem skill that I could see that would be an attack-based Totem. Now the big change is obviously Ancestral Totems got nerfed out of or patched out of Path of Exile in the last patch, which basically meant Melee got buffed and we removed Totems as a buffing Totem. But the way that this looks is the totem is actually just like base damage moving forwards, which is the way that it should be. So the skill itself, you know, is actually a damage dealing skill, not a support skill, which we all hate in Path of Exile 1 when that was a thing because it was just frustrating. Now, the other big thing here is in the previous skill, it didn't stipulate what type of weapon needed to be used. In this case, it's got one-handed maces or two-handed maces specifically as the requirements. Now, obviously, there's a lot more information we require about the skill gem and how it's going to work, and I would assume there's going to be a totem class of some nature. But one of the biggest issues in Path of Exile 1 is they have maces, they have all these different weapon types. There's no real requirement to actually use them. So what ends up happening in this case, we would use an axe in Path of Exile 1 if we were using Ancestral Warrior Totem because if it didn't require us to use a mace, the axe is going to have a higher base point damage. Now, we already know there's a lot of changes to Path of Exile 2 itemization, and this is definitely one thing that we can expect where skills are actually paired to the type of weapons that you're using as opposed to how it used to be before. There were some limits in Path of Exile 1, but I would say there's a lot more limitation around this in Path of Exile 2 to entice players to use a vaster array of weapons versus the same few types they use in Path of Exile 1. Okay, so the next gem that I wanted to look at was Blasphemy. Now, this one wasn't really used heavily in Path of Exile 1, 
uh, at, at least if you weren't playing in party play. So um, Blasphemy support was generally used with curse bots. Now in Path of Exile 2, it's not actually a support gem. It was referred to previously as like a meta gem because there is a new a gem tag called meta gems, but there's actually a gem tag here, which is a persistent gem tag, which I've never seen before. And that's totally new. But previously it used to reserve 35% of total mana. Now it's just like reserves 30 spirit per socket of curse. We don't know what the total cap on spirit is yet. Is that a different treatment to how it was done previously? No, it's basically the same thing. It's just trading out spirit for mana and now you just apply all your curses into one, which is what you did previously in Path of Exile 1 when you were running a curse bot. So there's no real change to Blasphemy. It's just no longer a support gem. It's just a gem and then a bunch of gems stack on top of it. And per each gem that's stacked on top of it, based on your setup, you get 30 spirit per socket uh, or, or per socketed curse is reserved from your spirit total. And you still get the combined aura. But it's interesting to see like combines all socketed curse skills into a vile aura, applying their effect to all nearby enemies. I'm interested to see if that also means that do you need to have like an increased curse limit um, or can you just run the curses as auras and it reduces and takes away the curse limit? Is there curse limits in Path of Exile 2 or are they gonna, just going to let us have like infinite numbers of curses we can proc on the enemies as long as we can do it? That sort of seems like a really powerful outcome too. But who really knows at this stage? I... I'm interested to see where they go with this direction. Will things like Whispers of Doom still be in the game, which is an anoint where you'd have multiple curses? Who knows at this stage? This is all just speculation at this point. We'll find out more hopefully in the next 30 something days for when the uh, early access comes out. Now the next one is Bone Zone or Bone Shatter, but we'll call it Bone Zone. Now, what's really interesting between Path of Exile 1 and Path of Exile 2, in Path of Exile 1, the way that Bone Shatter works is you gain trauma when you hit with that attack, and that then inflicts damage back on yourself. So predominantly, Jugs used this for a very long time until the last patch. And if you could handle more trauma damage taken, which meant stacking a lot more armor, because trauma was a, um, a physical-based return damage attack, so more armor equals you take very little damage, and then you'd recover life based on the ascendancy from the Juggernaut called Untiring. Um, then you could basically just whack and then you'd slowly either progress with increased damage last league or in previous leagues increased speed before alt gems were entered into the game and then obviously we have complex trauma which is in path of exile one which is a total cap of eight to nine stacks and then that's your cap of damage in path of exile two bone shatter doesn't appear to have trauma and the other thing is it requires one-handed maces again or two-handed maces now, I did have a look for Trauma Support Gems, which is another support gem that's in Path of Exile 1 for strike skills. And it doesn't appear to be the case where we know if Trauma is in the game again. So potentially Trauma is not a mechanic that they're going to put in Path of Exile 2, because that would then mean that you would be playing a one-button build where you would just be constantly hitting the same enemy to proc more and more Trauma which is probably against the design element or design ethic that they're applying in Path of Exile 2, where they want you to chain multiple skills together instead of whacking with one skill all day long. I don't know whether or not there's much truth to this or a lot of fact or whatnot. We don't really know enough information, but it's also really interesting that Bone Shatter is now a mace skill specifically. And if that sticks, then again, it's just going to be a totally different skill versus what it was in Path of Exile 1. Now the next one cast on critical strike support. Now it used to be a support gem is now a persistent triggered meta gem. And this is a different type of gem. They were talking about meta gems previously when they first sort of advertised Path of Exile 2. Now it does require level 58, which is a little different to the previous cap, which was level 38, but the effects of it are significantly more powerful. The other thing that I noticed is it requires a hundred spirit reservation moving forwards as well. So the Flavor text here or the catch text here is gains 10 energy shield or energy, sorry, when you deal a critical strike with a skill, triggers all socketed spells and loses all energy on reaching maximum energy, which means that potentially there is, you need to apply more hits with damage, for example, to, eat, to reach a cap before you essentially then deal a critical strike. Um, or when you deal a critical strike, sorry, you have to hit so many times to hit maximum critical strikes up to then have an explosion of skills. So say you might have to hit five times with crits and then after when you hit that sixth crit or that fifth crit, you then trigger all socketed spells and then you reset your energy total that you gain up to and then you have to do it all over again. 
that's what this reads to me, or potentially this looks like 10 hits. So if reservation's 100 spirit, then every time that you hit, you gain 10 energy. Sorry, different stat again. Uh, energy looks to be a totally different stat from looking at this in more detail as I'm talking through it. Anyway, it's a very different skill than what it was previously in Path of Exile 1, which would be you would socket the uh, the attack skill within your setup, like, you know, for example, um, Cyclone or something like that. You would max out your crit, and then every time you would crit, you'd then also put the triggered skill that you want in there. Every time you crit, you trigger that skill every single time. That is essentially a one-button build. Uh, what this is basically saying is when you critical strike with a skill, not the skill attached to the cast on crit, uh, which would mean any other skill in your skill index that you've got going, when you apply a crit from that skill, it then builds up the persis persistent buff of cast on critical, and then you would then explode with a, a flurry of spell skills or whatever they might be once you hit a maximum total cap of the amount of times you've hit with that other skill that you're using, which is very different and totally... Um, you know, a, a totally different approach to this skill. Is it bad? I actually think it's really cool and could potentially lead into some really cool build combinations considering you can have up to like nine skills in your setup, which would mean you would have like passive cast skills, like you could have cast on shock, cast on crit, cast on freeze. And if you do all those elemental damage types, like if you're running like a wild strike build or something like that, then potentially, you know, you could unleash a flurry of like cast on spells. It's like a totally different meta that could be created from a build perspective. That would be really interesting to see how um, we approach making builds with this type of setup and other skills associated with it. Cast while channeling looks very similar to cast when on crit. And basically it generates energy as you're channeling. And then once you hit what looks like a total cap of energy, then basically it then unleashes all the skills that you've been channeling up to, to then do a ton of damage. This is different to the way that it worked in Path of Exile 1, which was you would have a supported skill that you would channel. And then as you channel that skill, it just casts that spell every so many seconds, you know, based on you holding down the channel button. Uh, this is going to be really interesting because potentially you could have like multiple skills triggering and then like once you get to the end of a trigger cr trigger cap it'll just explode with a ton of damage and that could be your single target damage. It'll definitely drag out fights. There's not a lot of information about this and it looks like the cooldown timers are totally different as well but there is a cooldown timer to your trigger rate. Um, now the other thing here is again trigger meta and spell gem. It's another meta gem which is a new series of gem that's coming into Path of Exile 2. But it should be really interesting. Cast while channeling builds weren't very popular in Path of Exile 1, just because they're tedious and laborious, and cast on crit was just way better to scale. So fingers crossed that this is treated as equally as powerful as cast on crit moving forwards. So there could be some really interesting build uh, variations and or metas that come out from this skill. I thought I'd include Detonate Dead because there's so many degenerates that really like this skill and play it absolutely every single league, including myself. Uh, look, it doesn't say whether or not it's based on percentage of corpse health. I'm hoping that's not the case because that's one of the things that made it so powerful in skills like cremation. But aside from that, there's also no mention of whether spectre banking will be a thing. Um, for if you don't know what spectre banking is, then give it a quick YouTube search. But it's basically snapshotting mechanics. We don't know if that's going to be in the game again or if there is a better solution or if the bind spectre gem will have a correlation to the skill set. But what we do know is the skill's back in the game and it looks like it's a level 4 skill. It's the same as what it was in Path of Exile 1. So it could very well... Oh, sorry. It's a uh, it's a level 12 skill. I should clarify there. I read the wrong number. Uh, that being said, you know, who knows how this is going to interact. Uh, what we can see is it's got a higher level of base uh, crit strike chance or crit chance, which means that potentially it could be an on-hit skill versus what it was previously. Uh, it's also more expensive at level 4 than what it was uh, at the total cap in Detonate Dead on PoE, PoE 1. So yeah, th this could be a totally different take on Detonate Dead that we haven't seen before. But, you know, we're just going to have to wait and see. Hopefully this is one of the skills that comes out when the, um, when the early access drops. Okay, so the next skill is Earthquake. Now, this is available from level 2 and previously... Oh, sorry, requires level three. Apologies, I keep reading the wrong stat. 
Uh, previously, this used to be an accessible skill from level 28. So it's definitely going to be an earlier skill that you can use. Probably similar to like Earth Shatter, something like that. Now, previously it used to hit the ground. There was a delay and then basically Earthquake would sort of sprout up. Um, but it looks like potentially it could be the same sort of proc that it was in the previous game. Like it says, Jagger Ground you create has 100% increased effect with a duration. Uh, Jagger Ground duration is three seconds. Now, it has the impact radius, Jagger Ground radius. Now, obviously, it's going to be where Jagger Ground does some sort of damage or effect to when you hit enemies, and then the impact is going to hit a few seconds later. So there could be the concept of less duration in Path of Exile 2 as it was previously. The other really interesting thing here is two-handed mace and one-handed mace again. It really looks like um, they're really leaning into this weapon based, you know, the skill is also going to dictate the weapon that you're using, which again, wasn't something that was huge in Path of Exile 1. A lot of the time you just run like a really good ax. In this case, you wouldn't use maces, but you know, they're bringing that back and they're making it more relevant. And this is another sort of design choice that I can see here that's sort of speaking to that as well. But outside of that, the mana cost at level two uh, seems to be 10 mana, so it's a hell of a lot more mana. So you would expect this to be quite a lot more powerful. Attack speed sort of looks the same. Attack damage is 66% versus 143% on the low point. I'm not entirely sure what that means at this stage, and there's no added damage, and this is probably going to be because, again, they're going to be rescaling damage in Path of Exile 2. In Path of Exile 1, there is a huge amount of power creep which dictates ridiculous numbers into the, in some cases, billions now. And what we're going to have to get used to is lower damage numbers is not going to be a bad thing. It means that the enemies don't have as high hit points anymore. Overall, this should be a really fun skill. Probably going to be a warrior-based skill or a druid-based skill at this stage from what I can see. All right, I'm really glad about this one. Flicker Strike lives, except it's totally different. So... It requires a quarter staff now versus what it used to be, which was Termin Assessed or like Aspect of the Cat or Ira Sacrifice, right? Just to name a few. Uh, so it has teleports and strikes three additional times per power charge with 285% more attack speed. You cannot gain power charges while using this skill, which means gone are the days where you hold the button down and it blows up your entire screen. It's going to be more like a travel skill, I would assume, to sort of reach another enemy or whatnot. You do a ton of damage, and then you proc it or follow it up with a few other different attacks with the quarterstaff. But obviously, using quarterstaff, this is going to be a monk-based skill moving forward. So unfortunately for you guys that are playing Flicker Strike religiously with the Slayer, I don't think that is going to potentially going to be a traditional option in Path of Exile 2. That being said, who isn't to say that there are other ways or other skills that you could apply passively that could be doing damage while you're flicker striking, i.e., for example, cast on crit, where you could potentially gain power charges from cast on critting and generating power into the cast on crit setup, which would be set up differently to this skill, which would then allow you to generate power charges using other skills while you're flicker striking, and then you would be doing uh, automated skill chaining which is just an idea that comes to mind when i start thinking about potential ideas for potential builds in the game and potentially you could cheese the game by having it just constantly use other skills passively in the background to feed your main skill and we could just go back to what we were doing in path of exile one and just abuse path of exile two's mechanics to get around that who's to say that that's not possible yet we don't know uh and we also don't know what type of uniques are in the game that could override these sorts of mechanics on different skills as well. So there's a lot of unknowns. Potentially the skill could work exactly the same as in Path of Exile 1. You know, we had Ward Loop working, which shouldn't even exist in the game. So Path of Exile 2, I would say, would be very much the same path of we'll probably find plenty of ways to break this game. Okay, so the last one that I've got on the list here is Ice Spear. Now, Ice Spear is not what it used to be. Ice Spear is legitimately a spear skill now. So it requires a spear. And, uh, and is literally a spear skill. So basically it's throw an icy copy of your spear, literal spear that deals cold damage after a short distance. It arms uh, massively boosting its damage. When the spear breaks against an enemy, it deals damage in a cone shape uh, area behind them. Now, arming skills is interesting. How this mechanic works, who in God's name knows yet? We don't know anything about spear skills at this stage. This is in a significant difference to what it was in Path of Exile 1, but not so much as you might think. 
I believe the arming component is similar to the second form component that Ice Spear had, which is where you'd like throw the Ice Spear and then would break apart into further spears. And then that would then hit the enemy and then that would then proc cones. But uh, who's really to say that that works the same? It could be, I could be totally off kilter here as well. But that being said, it used to be a spell skill and a cold spell projectile skill in particular, a critical uh, based one. Now it's just straight a attack projectile AOE cold, uh, what looks to be like a melee proccing skill moving forwards, which will most likely be used on like the Huntress um, or character archetypes of that nature moving forward. So it's very interesting. Like we actually have spears and different things like flails in the game, which we never really had. And well, we never had in Path of Exile 1. So it's going to lead to a lot of skills being very different in nature moving forwards. And we're just going to have to adjust to those changes between the two games. Okay, so if you like this type of video, let me know in the description below. I find it really interesting to unpack the skills because there's so many changes between the parallel of the two games that is just, we're going to have to totally rethink the way that we play the game. Righteous Fire, though, looks like it might just be the same, but who knows, they might give us the old Righteous Fire in Path of Exile 2 from Path of Exile 1, and that would really keep the uh, the player base really happy with some of the sort of things that you could do with that. Fox would also be really happy with that too. Uh, but overall, you know, there's tons of fantastic skills. Now, in the next video, if you want me to look at some new skills that are coming into the game, let me know below. There's some really cool things like Falling Thunder and stuff like that that I'm super, super excited to play. And uh, obviously, Flail skills and Shield skills. There's one where you smash the shield into the ground and it sends out a, uh, a shockwave, which you can definitely guarantee I'll be playing as maybe one of the first skills I play because if they put Templar in that early access, I'm going to be playing it. Anyway, if you like videos like this, don't forget to like and sub to the channel. Don't forget to follow the Twitch. I usually stream most nights. And also don't forget to follow the X. I'm working on getting that up and running too. Anyway, I'll see you guys later and have a good one.